Hey, I'm James from Soaking Dad Barbecue, and ever since I've done a couple videos on the brand new Komodo Joe Connected Joe, I get asked all the time in comments, James, is the Connected Joe just a regular Komodo Joe with an integrated eye command built in? I can assure you it's not, but to find out if that's a good thing, I'm gonna do a head-to-head -head test using the OG, the Dezora uh, Komodo branded eye command versus the newest offering, the temperature controller that is built into the Connected Joe to find out which does its job best. So I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with products like the iCommand. I've shared many, many times over the past couple of years. My personal view is you just don't need them if your goal is to hold nice flat temperatures. The Classic Series 3, my Big Joe Series 1, I bought, I bought one of each. My Big Joe Series 3, these hold flat lines and they breathe better than any Kamado I've ever used. And so you're able to set up temperatures, go to bed and wake up to find your grill exactly where you left it. And so for many of those reasons I've said you don't need products like the eye command. I also found I did a test a couple years ago competing man versus machine and I was able to hold flatter temperatures than the eye command uh, was able to achieve. But I've started to soften my stance on this, particularly in the past year, ever since I got the Masterbuilt Gravity Series. And I had an experience where I was cooking a pork shoulder. We were out and about a couple hours away from our grill and the temperature of the food reached where we want to pull it off. And I was hours away and not able to do that. But because it's Wi-Fi connected anywhere, anytime, I was able to remotely log in, turn the temperature of the grill down to 150 degrees, which is a food safe holding oven, and come home a couple hours later to some delicious pulled pork. This was a pivotal moment. I've been testing this a bunch lately, including with grills like the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro, or more recently, the Komodo Joe Connected Joe. I've even started experimenting doing a manual mode where I've held a brisket at a food safe temperature for 11 hours using the residual heat of my Komodo Joe Big Joe and was able to turn out a brisket that was one of the most moist and juicy ones I've ever done. I still need to find that exact window and get it right for when to stop cooking and use time and temperature to get the perfect result but this result is one worth pursuing with lots more time energy and testing so I'm going to continue to play with that I'm even going to continue to change my stance on having a fan so I've picked up for a future video to test make sure you're subscribed so you're alerted when that comes out but comparing fans like the flame boss to the fireboard drive as well as the thermalworks signals and billows combination to find out which fan I'm going to keep purely for the long hot hold. As temperatures like 150 degrees, this is just getting, even for me, too difficult to hold manually. I've been able to dehydrate peppers uh, at about 180 degrees to 200 degrees. I've done beef jerky at 180 degrees, but this is about the limits of even my ability to hold a nice flat temperature for hours on end and not have either the risk of our temperature going way up or our flame going out. And so technology here in the sub 180 degree space, which is great for cold smoking cheese, making beef jerky, dehydrating peppers, or more recently, my new favorite thing, the long hot hold. A little bit of technology assistance goes a long way. And so I am gonna make space in the arsenal for a fan in a future video. But before doing that, given the comments, uh, as I shared earlier, there's so much uh, negative experience with the eye command developed by Dezor. Dezor is the same group that makes the slow roller. So slow roller is a big win based on online reviews, uh, a bit of hit and miss, and part why I haven't shown the eye command over the past two years is just because if there's a chance that those reviews are true and can happen to you, I don't want to, to promote things and uh, people spend their hard earned money and have a really, really negative experience. Looking at some of those comments, like any other Wi-Fi product, including grills like the Camp Chef, where I ran into Wi-Fi trouble. I come from a computer networking background. I understand Wi-Fi interference, bands, different radio channels, and your neighbors, and still occasionally run into Wi-Fi challenges. And I suspect this is a big part of a lot of the frustrations that many people have, but there's also some pretty specific things to the iCommand product. And so what I've been assured is there is no iCommand parts, components, internals, algorithm or anything. The Komodo Joe Connected Joe is a brand new thing using a brand new controller and a brand new product. And so given that it's brand new, I wanna see how it compares against the 
old version uh, from Desora in terms of maintaining nice steady temperatures. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna fire up both of our grills, get them nice and heat soaked, and then just let them run along on autopilot to see how each of these two compare. I can't speak again because the Connected Joe hasn't been out long enough to say if there's any quality problems, but I put it through tons of abuse, including things it says not to in the manual, like exposing it to water. It sat out last night in the rain, uh, or I've used my power washer and hose to test the water resistance. This is an important thing. Even though, and again, the manual says not to leave it out in rain, the Connected Joe comes with a water rating that is superior to every Traeger available on the market. So if you look at the IPX ratings, I think IPX3 is what the Traeger's rated. The Connected Joe is IPX4. Uh, but that's enough about the water ratings today is all about the temperature controller and its ability to do exactly what it claims to do, which is nice steady temperatures. So we can throw on some food, go to bed, go away, and the computer is going to take care of the rest. So let's fire up our two grills and see what is in store from a data perspective. Okay, I've already cleaned out the leftover ash from our previous cook, but I'm going to place one piece of smoking wood I'd like to find to as equal as I can in the bottom. We're not cooking anything today, but to simulate a real world cook, I don't want the piece of smoking wood to be the variable or the lack of smoking wood to be the variable. So I'm gonna place this on the bottom like I normally would on the Connected Joe, trying to avoid the automatic fire starter ring so that we get the coals lit around it and that's what's actually going to burn the wood. Cover that up, add a little fresh charcoal. Our divide and conquer rack with our heat deflector plates. I'm gonna go for the heat deflector plates as that's both what the Connected Joe has as well as my Series 1. They're both off, uh, they're both based off Series 1 and 2, which is four inches shorter than Series 3. Our cooking grids, we'll install another tracking probe just to measure the two, but let's go set up the I command. Basket, smoking wood, and some charcoal. Install the I command and the I command adapter. So the I command does have a fire it up feature to bring our grill up to temperature, but it has no ability to start the charcoal. This is something that the Connected Joe has that the original I command doesn't. So to try and not have my grill blazer grill gun be the difference maker here, since I can go from a completely cold grill to cooking in about 15 minutes, I'm going to use an automatic fire starter place this down in the coals, put a little bit of charcoal around that, and then we can use the I command fired up feature since this is what we need to recreate to be able to have now both computers taking control of starting our fire and bringing our grill up to temperature. Let's install our divide and conquer rack. Heat deflector plates, also on the low factory Kamado Joe positions, just that way it's the same between our Big Joe Series 1 and our Connected Joe, we're using both the low position. Let's get some cooking grates. Okay, let's get our tracking probes. So the I command by Desora uses this pit probe that goes on our grate level. So let me just slide this down into place. Whereas the Connected Joe and the Pellet Joe both have an integrated probe back here, which is about the same level as our dome thermometer. So I'm gonna use my Inkbird tracking probe here and hang a thermometer probe down through the top of each grill. This is what I'm gonna to use to compare them. So we are not getting thrown off by one system reading at great level and the other one reading at dome level because there's always going to be about a 30 degree Fahrenheit difference, but this is what the computer needs to control temperatures. So let's close that and add our tracking probe for the comparison and hoping you can see that, but I'm just going to drop down and pull that through till it's about the same level as the dome thermometer would be. And that will be probe number four. So let's do the same thing with the Connected Joe. You can see that integrated probe thermometer that I was talking about. So I am going to also drop in a probe here in probe port number one, and that is hanging at about dome level. So let's fire them both up now using the computers and track how accurate each one brings our grill up to temperature as well as performs over the duration of a cook. Okay, let's give our Connected Joe some power, close our bottom draft door, hit our automatic fire starter, that's the ring around the bottom that's going to start to heat those coals. And I'm going to be going for a dome temperature of about 270 degrees. So we'll play with this uh, a little bit just to try and track what I see on the dome. But for now, let's set the computer to 270. Go close our top vent, which is almost in the right spot to just very slightly open. 
Okay, we have both our grills up to temperature and a stable temperature. I'm not sure the data shows anything too insightful between the startup mode on the Komodo Joe Connected Joe with the automatic fire starter versus the Big Joe Series 1 since we're dealing with a Big Joe versus a classic size that's roughly about 200 pounds of extra ceramic. So the difference in time here was about 15 minutes, 15 minutes longer for a Big Joe with a single fire starter using the fired up mode on the I command versus the Komodo Joe Connected Joe with the automatic fire starter and the integrated temperature controller. So about 15 minutes, uh, I think that makes about sense given the size difference between the two. I've also been playing just a little bit before we lock in, we're just a minute or so after two o'clock now. So this is gonna be our start line now that both grills are heat soaked and holding steady. So I set our Komodo Joe Connected Joe to 270 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the I command I have set at 285 degrees Fahrenheit because again, the temperature controller is sitting on the grid level. And this is giving me the exact same temperatures on our tracking probes, which I have hanging in each dome, roughly about the uh, dome thermometer level in the middle of each grill. So the game plan from here is just to let these run for at least the next hour or so, so we can get a sense of how the algorithm sort of smooths and sorts things out to help create a nice consistent cooking environment if we were doing a longer lower slow cook. I'm not gonna let this run for 24 hours or anything like that, but I think an hour or maybe two will give us uh, some insights in terms of how each automatic controller copes with maintaining temperatures over an extended period of time. I'll see you in a little bit when I've got some more data to share. Okay, so our test has been going now for about an hour and a half. And if I show you the data from the two charts, similar to what I've recorded in the past, even two years ago version of firmware on the I command is uh, what you may even hear in the background if I play a little bit of a clip, is the way that it's working is, is it's shutting the air door, letting temperatures regulate, and then blasting sort of at different levels of intensity air. So your fire's kind of dying out, sparking up, dying out, sparking up. And this is exactly what you see in the temperature chart. And while the delta is maybe no more than five degrees high to five degrees low, you see these little uh, curves. If I compare that to the data chart on the Komodo Joe Connected Joe, it's a much flatter line. So not only can I not hear anything that's going on in the fan, I'm not getting that same degree of variability. But this is even though that chart may not look that important, there is something else that is incredibly important that I think is worthwhile understanding between these two different uh, temperature controllers. The fire management with the I command is an all or nothing. Here, you can hear it going now. It's an all or nothing approach where the door is closed, your fire is dying, and then it's being stoked back to life by that fan trying to uh, inject a little bit of extra air. So this fire dying, fire stoking. This is the worst tasting part of a charcoal fire. is a fire that is struggling for air or some fresh coals uh, combusting. And so that's a little bit of what's going on at a small scale with the I command. I'm not sure exactly how the algorithm works in the connected Joe in order to A, not hear it. Maybe it's just the insulation uh, of the fan, but you're also not getting this on again, off again approach. And I cannot stress how important these little differences on a chart actually are in the taste of your food. I've done a couple of briskets on the Komodo Joe Connected Joe, ribs, low and slow cooks, steaks, and chicken. And it is not recreating any of the things that I didn't like in the flavor profile uh, that the I command did. And you can hear <laughs> buffing and buffing uh, away, starting and stopping our fire in the background. I hope uh, you enjoyed a bit of this experiment. This question has come up so much that I wanted uh, to address it because I've heard directly from Komodo Joe that the Connected Joe does not use any of the I command parts. It's completely brand new. I see it in the data, I hear it in the results, and most importantly, I taste it on the taste buds. And um, if this has been a, a hesitation for you reading the previous Dezora I command product reviews, I wouldn't project that uh, onto the I command because everything that I can see and test it is a completely different piece of hardware. That's it for today though. I'm James Sokadab Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up, even if you are using a little technology assistance. See you in the next one.